And our final talk uh, today before the student um, panel discussion um, is from Professor Brian um, Harney. Um, and I'm going to promote you now, Brian. Um, yes, here you are. So, have I done that right? Yes, I have. Uh, yes, Professor Brian Harney from the DCU Business School. Here he is coming in now. Um, and our final um, course that we're going to talk about from the, this uh, range of new courses is the Digital Business and Innovation uh, degree. Hi, Brian. You're welcome. Hi, good time. afternoon, Colette. How are you? <laughs> Very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to let you crack on because um, you are we are a little bit behind. And uh, just to keep things running along, um, I'll let you go ahead there if you want. Perfect. Um, I'll just share a screen and just confirm that that looks okay. Yeah, if you want. Yes, absolutely fine. Great stuff. Well, listen, I know you've had a busy day and I know you've had a fantastic overview of, of programs and this is a great use of your time in terms of learning what's out there. Uh, my name is Brian Harney. I'm Professor of Strategy and HR here in the Business School, where I'm also a director of the Digital Business and Innovation degree. So that's the degree I'll be talking to you about today. Um, the business school, um, just to do a bit of promotion, AA CSB accredited. What does that mean? We're in the top 5% of business schools in the world. Uh, we have small business school ch uh, charter status, uh, the only school in Ireland, and that's recognition for our work with entrepreneurship and local small firms. And DCU, of course, is the uh, university, 2021 University of the Year. Uh, and that called out our student centeredness. So some something you would have seen as a constant theme uh, echoed through. Uh, the talks. So if I'm going to talk about a digital business innovation degree, I want to give you a hint at where the innovation is on, on our side, if you like. And this is some of the things that we thought about when we were designing the degree and just to call out for you. And we've got rid of terminal examinations. So there's no terminal examinations in this degree. It's 100% continuous assessment. Uh, we've got rid of smaller lectures, so lecture breadth, and instead have more immersive experiences that I'll talk to in a minute. Um, we've got rid of the traditional lecture. Um, so the idea of sort of two fixed hours where someone is talking at you or, um, or to you. Uh, and instead, we've got things like hackathons, sprints, co-created sessions, uh, immersive sessions. Uh, a lot of lectures in the past might find the issue in terms of, oh, I've got a lot of assessments coming up to Christmas, or I've got a lot of assessments coming up to summer. We've sought to spread assessments out throughout the year so that you've got a bit more time to reflect and learn on uh, as you're going. Uh, what have we raised? Um, industry engagement. So a hallmark of all the futures programs is, is intense engagement with industry. So you have a year placement, which is really, really important to go out and get practice. But we have embedded partnerships through every single year of the program. There's autonomous learning pathways. So you get to choose some of the assessments that you're going to take. You can follow your own interests in terms of technology. Uh, what does, when that assessment, what does it look like? Well, it may be essays, it may be presentations, but it could be a podcast, it could be a blog, it could be a vlog, it could be a, a VR experience. So it's tech rich. Uh, and we're fostering as well through the small group, a, a student community. Um, things we've created, um, as well as a disciplinary transcript, you'll have a transversal skills transcript, which is about the type of skills that you've developed throughout your time at DCU, learning how to learn. We've got live cases with industry, uh, and we've got a focus on you through self-development. Um, a lot of things actually there, but it's just to give you a sense of, of what's new and what's innovative and, and what we're really, really excited about here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about digital innovation, some of the opportunities, some of the challenges, give you an overview of the course, and then we can have a Q&A. But what I wanted to do is give you the chance as well. So when I say digital innovation, just using the chat function here, really interested to see what you think of. What's your immediate reaction? Is it a company? Is it a challenge? Is it a person? Is it an example? So if you want to just, uh, I know there's a, a few of us here. So if you want to just throw some examples in the chat there, just in terms of, what do you think digital innovation is? And then I'll use some of those answers to, um, to navigate the session. So typically here, what people will put is, is company names. So they put like uh, the big techs that we're used to dealing with in Ireland, the Google, the Apple. But one thing the pandemic has shown us is that digital is everywhere. 
and that every organization has to be digital savvy. And we've seen organizations and fantastic examples of organizations pivot in terms of being more digital, but that's also drawn our attention to the gap and the difficulty around digital. It's not something that happens easily. And, and I suppose where this degree positions students is translators between the potential of technology and how that can deliver value for business, or at least perhaps reduce value destruction. Because a lot of businesses uh, make a lot of mistakes when it comes to digitalization. So this is the land of opportunity. Uh, and again, why is this significant? Why would you want to study this? What type of things will we be looking at? Well, it's an old stat here, but there's seven times more devices than people on the planet. And that's, that's estimated for 2020. So 50 billion devices. So think of that connectivity between people and the potential of that if you're trying to create a service or an app or even in, in education through the use of technology. Um, 90% of the world's data uh, created over the last number of years, massive potential, sort of the new oil, if you like, of the new century, but big data isn't big knowledge. What's the questions you ask of data? How is that collected? How do you minimize bias in the data? And then how do you use that data to answer real important questions to help you as a business and to help transform businesses and society? So big data, a big opportunity. Convergence of industries. So. I just put this up as a very practical example. So this is a Siemens fridge, but if you look at the description, Wi-Fi enabled touchscreen, food management cameras, you can write notes, you can stream music, you can watch telly. So what business are they in and how are they delivering value? And, and what happens when there's a convergence uh, across industry? So traditional products become connected and become digitalized. Uh, and what are the opportunities there? And equally, what are the challenges there? in terms of convergence. What we do know is that industries and businesses that engage more with digitalization and digital tools outperform those that don't. So companies using web technologies, cloud, mobile, big data, internet of things, design thinking, outperform traditional respondents. So yes, it makes a difference for organizations that can actually uh, do it well. Um, these are just recent examples of the potential technology I just pulled out, and you'll see, you'll see the dates are very current. Uh, a dairy robot checking um, cheese quality. Uh, questions around the metaverse and does employment law hold in, in, in the metaverse? And obviously, there's a lot of media around the metaverse. And for example, we had a dedicated session on the metaverse uh, recently uh, with Accenture. So we're not only exploring sort of existing technologies, but also having conversations around future technologies uh, and opportunities and challenges around those. Um, we can talk about machine learning, but we can talk about automation. Um, Japan what, has this ambition to make half its cargo ships autonomous. Uh, we, can, we talk about autonomous cars. We look at Tesla and, and what they're trying to do. It raises questions of ethics as well. If, if, if an autonomous ship is to hit another unautonomous ship, you know, which one moves out of the way? Who's, where does the responsibility reside? If an autonomous car has to make a decision of hitting another car or going on the pave walk and, and the risk of hitting another person. And um, so with technology comes huge, as I said, opportunities, but also very big questions. And, and a lot of the time, very sort of questions that touch on ethical dilemmas. Uh, I, we talk a land of opportunity, it's an Ireland of opportunity, and this is a digital framework, a national framework, recently launched by the government, and, and you see here they're talking about we need to transform the digital skills of business. We need, as we all know, a digital infrastructure that works. We need people with digital skills, and this is where this degree speaks, and we have to talk about digitalization of, of, of public services. So revenue have always been very good in terms of their proactiveness um, with digital, but is that the same of every experience that you have with the, with the public sector? So huge opportunities for efficiencies and innovation across the sectors. And Ireland has been at the forefront, obviously using human capital as the basis of its advantage to attract in firms and to build their own uh, small firms and entrepreneurship. And this is a way of staying ahead of the game and keeping up uh, with those challenges. So uh, this degree is positioned right at the heart of all this uh, opportunity. So harnessing our own uh, digital skills uh, in order to make a, an Ireland of things, if you like. With opportunity comes challenge. Uh, and for every opportunity, 
We have organizations doing things really well, which we'll always mention, but there's organizations that severely struggle with digitalization. So this is a bearing point report last year, wake up call, Irish businesses, they're, they're stalling on the path to maturity. We're ranked bottom on some of the EU scores in terms of digitalizations of our businesses. So um, it's proving a challenge for organizations. Um, CEOs are saying they have huge skill gaps in this area. It's a top three concern in terms of the, the digital skill set we need for the future and the availability of that skill set. And CEOs, 70% think their core business model is under attack. 90% of them do not feel they have the appropriate skills or technology to deal with that threat. So if you like, they can see the train coming at them and they haven't got the capability or capacity to navigate around it or under it or over it or through it. Um, and that that's a key challenge. So this is an area where organizations are really wrestling and grappling with. So it's on the, we're really pleased this digital business and innovation degree is on the cusp of contemporary challenges. Um, businesses are saying, and this is McKinsey, I'm just throwing out some examples just to make this feel current. Um, you know, 64% of these respondents saying we need to build new business models to incorporate the potential of digital with very few having made any progress uh, along this path. And I'm talking about things like machine platform and crowd uh, sourcing. They're the type of things that we look at as part of this degree. So to give you a, an oversight of, of what this degree is about, and I suppose we can split it into two sections. There's the emphasis on the digital and there's the equally important emphasis on the human. And we're talking about the two of them in tandem. So we've got what we call a digital quotient. So this is our emphasis on digital, where we explore modules like digital ecosystems. So not just the organization, but everything that's going on around the organization, thinking about platform, uh, digital tools. Moving into uh, second year, we talk about digital business models. Uh, how do you leverage the potential? Digital labs, where we actually get to work on some of these tools in practice and in collaboration with industry. Uh, a really insightful module on failure. So we always talk about failure in entrepreneurship, but what about failure, institutional failure, political failure, failure in sports, individual failure, dealing with failure, learning from failure, psychological safety, whistleblowing, really, really important and contemporary topics. And then for final year, we obviously have our placement, work placement, where you go out to and apply some of these tools uh, in a real business. And we come back then for a challenge-based project where we work with real clients, with real problems, with real people. Uh, and we get mentored in terms of uh, some of our projects by industry and explore digital leadership and change. So there's a journey through the program. And what I've done is I just picked out one or two highlights of what we're doing uh, at the moment. So we're doing some co-creation with Accenture. So how do we stay current as a business school? How do we make sure that you're on the forefront of, of what's happening in digital technology? Well, let's work with some companies and some clients that are actually dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're really excited to be working with two fantastic DCU alumni at Accenture who've helped us design the degree and are equally co-creating some of the content with us. Uh, so for example, they delivered a fantastic session on cloud computing there last week. Uh, before Christmas, we explored ecosystems with them uh, and really committed and, and really interesting engagement in terms of us learning from them and equally them learning from us. Uh, this is a, a student example on the, from the ecosystems module uh, from last semester. Um, Netflix, how does it work? Who does it deal with? What does a partnership look like? What is its business model? How do you unpack it and understand it more? So think of those tech companies that, you've, that you have use every day, but you necessarily haven't sat back and said, well, what is it they do that's different to other businesses? What are the challenges they face as they continue to grow? Or in Netflix case, as their growth sort of subsides post pandemic and people aren't signing up as much to subscription services. And equally as Disney comes on board and some of the mergers at a and in the States come on board, how you, how you continue to sustain uh, your success. Um, we have students developing their own business pitches. So examples here from um, student videos of, of business pitches conducted for a module last semester. So it's not just us looking at ideas outside, it's us developing our own ideas and saying, wow, what would happen if we use digital technology with this opportunity? Uh, and can we map out a, a new business on the back of it? Uh, very dynamic interface, so uh, invested a lot of resources and time in terms of 
if we're going to be a digital degree, we need to have a digital platform that matches those expectations. So this is just a snapshot of our online platform. Don't worry too much about the content here. I'm just showing you 15% of this degree is delivered online. And this is the sort of the interface uh, that you'd be dealing with and something that we've designed very carefully with the expert team here in, in DCU. Um, coding projects, uh, experiential learning. We have a virtual reality lab here in the business school, the Calm Devs Lab. So we had students in there for induction. We're going to have them in there in a week or two doing a team-based exercise. Uh, this is a quote from a student from this year. Best induction I could have imagined. We didn't think it would be as good. Can't wait to get back on the lab next semester. So balancing the practical with the, the academic and the theory and the research evidence around this. Um, again, just a snapshot of our, our interface around VOR and AOR and the type of things that we're exploring. But digital in itself um, won't deliver success. Uh, what's really important is, is the human side of the equation. And we're really conscious of that with this degree. So we've got a dedicated pathway through the degree where you develop yourself. So it's the first time we've ever done this. It's a module focused on you as an individual, learning about yourself in year one, learning how you work in teams and work with others and work with technology in year two, and future-proofing yourself in year three and four, looking at careers. And you'll develop uh, what we've called an e-portfolio or virtual CV through the program, which captures your learning. And that's something that not simply you get with your degree, but you've learned how to learn and you've got to reflect on your reflections. So that's a skill set you take forward into the workplace. And when we talk about sort of portfolios, careers and, and career hopping, um, it's a skill set that's absolutely fundamentally important is, is thinking about thinking, learning about learning. Uh, and that's something that we'll focus on as well. So the human dimension, um, digital isn't software, it's a mindset. Uh, a lot of digitalization efforts fail through neglecting the human effort. Uh, and I saw this from Hewlett Packard uh, earlier today, the rise of reality uh, and, and post pandemic, again, thinking about the importance of human touch and human contacts and relationships uh, and how significant they are as a complementary and not a substitute for the digitalization. So they feed off each other. Again, just a few uh, snapshots here and thanks to my colleagues for, for putting these together. Uh, Challenges, virtual collaborations, um, looking at your own careers, opportunity for self-reflection, uh, some student comments. I learned a lot about myself, eye-opening, I'm glad I did it. Uh, enjoyed the reflective time, discovering new sides to myself. So that's really where we want to get in education, um, new sides to myself. Think, um, and just one, one final sort of, I know I've gone through these very, very quickly, but I was just conscious of the time. Um, one exercise we've done as well, which is new to us, we've done a virtual collaboration with Babson College in the US, whereby we've done peer networking sessions and students have got to hear pitches for businesses from Babson students. Babson is the number one entrepreneurship college in the world. Uh, give feedback, do peer networking. And we did that again this semester. So further pitches, the, the business has business have been narrowed down. And we'll also have a face-to-face -face session in May. So two virtual touch points and a physical touch point. So learning about intercultural dimensions through virtual collaboration. Again, very novel for us. So this degree, we're in our first year. Uh, we've 26 students on board and it's a prototype. We're learning, we're experimenting and we're innovating with our student cohort. So just, just to wrap up and just to mention Ergo, you know, the best way to present prevent sort of disruption is digital trans transformation. And that's a fantastic Irish company, Ergo. Um, businesses will die basically if they don't begin to explore what's right in front of them and, and start using some of these opportunities and addressing some of these challenges. And equally, universities will be dinosaurs if they don't prepare students for the jobs of the future. Uh, and I see a question coming in, which we can come around to as well, but yeah, there are certain roles that we expect students to go into. So digital consultancy, um, digital skills within a business translator between the digital side, so the tech side and, and the business side, but equally true transform and through your virtual CV, we're preparing you for jobs that don't exist yet. And if you look at all the trends out there, the jobs that you see advertised now didn't exist five years ago. So you want to leave university, certainly with disciplinary expertise, but the ability to prepare yourself for the future. 
uh, and, and that's something with this degree we're very much focused on and, and very much trying to do. So I'll stop sharing there and um, see if I can take any questions or if, if anything's come in. Um, yeah, so yes. that there's a Thanks, Claire. Uh, I just see that question there. Yeah, so it's a four-year degree. There's a one-year work placement, which is uh, optional, but obviously uh, for people looking to get experience in the workplace, it, it's highly recommended. And 99% of students take up that, what we call an intra-work placement, uh, where you'll be placed in industry and again, get to develop that skill set, develop a network, develop a bit of experience, and then you come back for your final year, your fourth year in that instance. And what we find a lot of the time is our students are frequently hired by the companies that they've done their placement with. Mm -hmm. So you get to develop a relationship. It's a test for you, whether you like the company and the culture, but equally it's a long recruitment process for the company as well, where they can begin to assess you. Um, yeah, and I've sort of mentioned some of the, the, the skills there uh, and, and the opportunities, but we are positioned on the cusp, and it's true of all the futures degrees uh, of, th of, of rapidly changing things. So we want you to prepare and have a skill set for futures that don't exist. And I know that might sound very sort of uh, out there, but actually that's the purpose of education. It's to get you thinking about your thinking. Uh, can I ask a quick question, Brian? Sorry about that, yeah. So a student is in sixth year now and they're doing the business, they, them, they don't need to be doing business for this course. You know, what sort of person will choose digital business innovation over the general business studies course? Are they a particular kind of person, do you reckon? Or I don't want to put thoughts in people's head, but you know, is there, why would they choose, you know, if they're if not the safe option of business studies because they know about it and everything else, but this is a brand new and it's a very exciting course, obviously, but there might be a bit like you described it, I mean, it's, it's so involved, so many new things and new words and everything else. They might be a bit afraid to go for it, um, but then they do that self-awareness in the first uh, year, which helps them, but they might need a bit of self-awareness beforehand, I think, to go into the course. Would you agree? Yeah, well, look, I, I think, look, with, with all university degrees, it's a foundation and we're very careful in, in inducting people in and, and there's a build up and we have, particularly in the business school, we've got a life module, which is sort of getting used to university, getting to know people, just working and having fun and sort of getting used to the environment. So we don't throw everything at you straight away. So we work with you and that's, I suppose it's like a partnership and we listen and we get feedback and we change. But I suppose... If you've always sort of looked at the technology, so even say the Netflix example or the apps on your phone, or you followed the technology or you followed companies or you're, you're interested in a leader you've heard about, or, or maybe it's national challenges around where we're going in terms of digital. So I suppose if you've had that raised interest and in how does this work? How do people make money from this? How do people alleviate social challenges on the back of some of this technology? I think that will sort of um, hold, uh, hold on to you. And then also, maybe there's companies that you've already thought of working in or maybe there's people that you know that are working in certain jobs and you've heard about them and you're like wow i'd, I'd really like an opportunity here mm -hmm. i mean I, what i would say is um university is a great opportunity for you to get to know yourself and, and to your point we, we have modules now that help you do that and, and of course you leave university with a discipline degree and that's fantastic but you also leave with a a, a group of like-minded people and, and one thing DCU has, and, and our focus on, wasn't on this today, but if you come to the open days, you get a lot of information on this, sports societies, student-led societies. So we teach business ecosystems, but it's university ecosystem is really, really important when you're a student here. So yeah, you're in lecture theaters, but actually you could be playing sport or in a setting up a business clubs and society or a gamification clubs and society. So you get to learn what you're interested in while you're here as much as you, you're not going to know that in advance completely. Mm -hmm. You know, so absolutely. I think we're, we're very aware of that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the word data has been interspersed with all of these courses throughout the day. And, and data, is, I suppose, is a huge part of this as well. But that's where the world is going, isn't it? You know, and having a knowledge of data and how you can use data to help a company do better. And this is the, giving you the skills as well to, to, do, to do that, this, this, this course. Exactly. And I mean, we, we have an analytics module mm -hmm. and, and as part of the Futures programs, we also have an analytics specialism coming on board in 2024. But it, it, it's not data for the sake of data. It's actually thinking about, uh, and Lorraine's talk would have been fantastic on this as well, where the data comes, what's the potential biases in the data, what questions you ask of the data. 
I mean, rubbish in, rubbish out. You, know, you can have the best data in the world, but if you haven't got the right systems and people talking to it, it actually means nothing. Absolutely. So, um, but you, you, you did say uh, data is the new oil of the century. I thought it was really good. <laughs> yeah, so yeah I know. I, I, I borrow that from someone, so I'm not, I won't claim credit for that. <laughs> okay, but, uh, right. Yeah. You hear it a lot in, in, in industry when we're talking to industry. It's um, So I think and it's really important because obviously there's real-time data. And I, as well, I mean, thinking of how we learn from students is like we don't have to wait for the examination that's why there's no examinations in this course we can we can have continuous assessment we can give feedback as you're doing assessments and say actually this is looking good did you what about having a look at this or why don't you try putting that in the blog and see what it looks like and yeah. um, so i think that learning from each other i think is really really important mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that was fascinating. And I'm sure you will get lots of uh, people applying for that course now after that talk. You have a podcast as well, uh, Brian, don't you, on that particular course? Yeah, so we have a podcast on the, the Teaching Enhancement Unit and DCU has a podcast. Mm -hmm. So if, if I think you'll find it on, on the links. In terms I, of I can the, share that as well. As I yeah. share this recording, I can share that also with it. Um, so thank you so much for your time today. Uh, it was very, very insightful. Um, so I can let you go now if you wish. Yeah, uh, perfect. So thanks, thanks a lot. lot. And thanks I'll for attending, you. everyone. Cheers, bye. Not at all.